Welcome to Conversations on the Coast, San Francisco's premier author interview program. And today we have a gentleman on the show who goes back as far as I do in book publishing. His name is Joseph Wamba. I ain't going to tell you how many years ago that was. He has a new book called Hollywood Station. It is a novel. It's published by Little Brown and Company. Thank you so much for coming by. Thanks for having me, Jim. You know, I want to start this session a little differently from the way we usually do it. I want to start by reading... Uh, something of what Michael Conley, the author of the Harry Bosch series and the Lincoln Lawyer, has had to say about Hollywood Station. I have been waiting a long time, he writes, for this book, and two pages in, I knew it was worth every minute, month, and year. Joseph Wamba is the master of the modern police novel. No, scratch that. He invented the modern police novel, and that's what I remember way back when. And Hollywood Station sets the standard once again. The story of cops working the street at the same time the streets are working the cops. It's full of the grit, humor, and truth that make it impossible to put down. That's Michael Conley. What a way to start, huh? Wow, that's not so bad. Yeah. Did you pay much for that? Or? <laughs> I would. <laughs> One of the other things uh, in the uh, press material that uh, stopped me was uh, a statement or a remark that uh, uh, James Elroy was uh, somewhat responsible in getting you to write again about the LAPD, to write about the new world of the LAPD. Is that true or is that puff? No, that's true. I'd been, I'd been uh, writing about other things, uh, other places, for you, more you, than you twenty years. You had broadened your canvas, I think you say in one. Place. I had. I'd become more versatile. I thought, and uh, apparently, people have been uh, wanting me to go back to my roots. Uh, and Mr. Elroy was one of them. So James uh, convinced me that I'm I'm qualified to go back and write about LAPD circa 06. And then finally, I decided to do it. As as we know, James can be very convincing. <laughs> yeah, he's a persuasive fellow, but uh, I couldn't just sit in a room and write about it because I'd been away too long from yeah, LAPD. Yeah, yeah. So I had to interview cops, fifty four of them. Wow, that's a lot of cop talk. That's a lot of cop talk. <laughs> a lot that's of a lot cop- of drink. There are a lot of drinks poured. I, I would imagine, yes, <laughs> yes, lemonade and things like that. <laughs> well, the, mm. well, the male cops require three and a half drinks to begin talking. Right. The female cops, they just have to smell the court. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's known as a cheap date. <laughs> oh, they're they're cheap, but they're good because yeah. because they're more verbal and they're not afraid to reveal their emotions. And the male cops aren't even in touch with their emotions. Yeah. So I'd, so the women make much better interviews. And revealing them is a sin, oh, so oh, to speak. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a terrible thing to do. Well, the, 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 the new world uh, of uh, LAPD policing uh, is, is, is captured in this novel. And at, at, at one point you write this, that there are 9,000 cops in the LAPD, and they have to police or patrol, however you want to say it, 467 square miles. That's a lot. Yeah, most people don't realize L.A. is that large geographically, but it is. It's a huge city. And uh, those cops are spread thin, as you can imagine, with that, yeah. with that kind of terrain to cover. And uh, under this federal consent decree that uh, is has been inflicted on the LAPD as a result of the Rodney King riots and the so-called Rampart, Rampart Division scandal where a couple of cops stole dope, mm-hmm. planted it. Uh, one of them robbed a bank. Uh, those handful of cops' uh, actions have resulted in this federal government consent decree in the United States attorney and his minions, and they number in the hundreds, audit and oversee everything LAPD does, and their paperwork is just killing them. It's enormous. They they're, do more paperwork than they do policing. Yeah, there's there's more acronyms in this book which relate to the internal and external policing of the police department than anything else. You know, it, it, it's absolutely crazy, and it it uh, this kind of situation uh, creates uh, a, a a deal whereby proactive police work gives way to police paranoia. Uh, a perfect example of that, Jim, is a true story, which is in the book, uh, 
uh, because I just decided to let the truth speak for itself instead of trying to explain uh, what the federal government the bureaucracy is doing to the LAPD. Every complaint uh, against an officer that's uh, submitted by a private citizen has to be investigated to the max, regardless of how absurd or insane the complaint is. And this is true, so help me God. A woman uh, made a complaint against an officer she was obsessed with, and she said that he had stolen her ovaries. And the, this was investigated so completely that the poor officer was was just about uh, ready to uh, he was ready for meltdown. And he said to the internal affairs investigators, finally, he said, yes, I I don't blame you guys for investigating this so completely because I guess it is possible uh, to steal one's ovaries because you guys have stolen my gonads. <laughs> well, reading Hollywood Station is like reading any other cop novel by Joseph Wambaugh. <laughs> it's a different experience. And we're going to find out why it's so different when we return. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC. Or send an email to jimfostercoc at gmail.com. Hollywood Station is the title. It's a novel by Joseph Wamba. It's published by uh, Little Brown and uh, another fair country writer whom we've had on this program, Robert Crace, uh, says Hollywood Station is a killer. Joseph Wamba set the standard with the choir boys and the new centurions all those years ago. And now he does so again. Wamba's trademark characters reveal today's L.A. cops through their strange and moving day-to-day lives, from arresting Darth Vader to surfing at dawn to losing a friend in a line of duty. No other writer illuminates the heart beneath the badge better or more honestly than Joseph Wamba. Hollywood Station will make you laugh, cry, and keep turning pages. The master is back. Crace is, Crace is smart. We've had Crace on the program. We, we know Crace. He's a smart guy. Smart guy. The other thing is that uh, what, what you really set, I think, is a, is a, is a, is a new standard in, in this book. As you put it uh, somewhere, prior to my work, the police procedural concentrated on how the cop acts on the job. I flipped it and concentrated on how the job acts on the cop. And boy, is that true in this book. Yeah, that's always been my my interest, uh, the psychology of the cop. And in this book, more than any other, I've probably done more with the psychology of the woman officer. Yes, yes. I, I didn't realize how strongly they have affected me during all these 54 interviews until I'd written the book and, and, and others who'd read the book told me that the, they go away from the book remembering the women so mm. vividly mm. in this book. I mean, they gave me stuff that I never could have dreamed up, nor, nor could any man. There's an anecdote, there's a scene in Hollywood Station, absolutely true, could never have dreamed it up, uh, when the woman officer riding with the grouchy old salt who doesn't want her with him. He's old enough to be her father, more than old enough. Right, right. And she's lactating. Yes. Now, how many guys could dream up this scene? No. And and this woman officer told me that she persuaded him to take her to the substation, and she had to run in, get the breast pump out of her war bag, and start pumping. So she had to take off her uniform shirt. She had to take off her Kevlar vest. She had to take off her T-shirt, and she's in there pumping, and he's out front just complaining and whining, and they get a hot call. And so he pops his head in the door and says, come on, we got a hot call officer down. And there she is, poor woman. She, she's 27 years old, you know, and he's 55. And she has to put on all of her gear and her Sam Brown, and she has to put the milk in, her, in the cold packs in her war bag <laughs> and run out the door, jump in the car. They take off, and this happens, so help me. She forgot her gun. It was left inside. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, oh, she had the milk. And he said it wasn't a total loss. At least we got the milk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in Hollywood Station, I, I found something else going on that uh, seemed to me to be to be different. I, I, I 
kind of sense there 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 are two major stories: the life of the LAPD cop today and the life of the criminal. What 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 kind of criminals are, are out there? And and I guess the thing I picked up was that. They're, they're, they're both working under the terms and consequences of that federal consent decree. I mean, the bad guys <laughs> know what the situation is and the opportunities they're from as well or better than, than the cops do. Yeah, and they're, uh, yeah, they know how the cops are spread thin. And, uh, and you know, there's a big market in identity theft today. And so these, these little... Uh, scurrilous little tweakers, methamphetamine uh, uh, freaks like mm-hmm. b- like my like my bad guy Farley Ramsdale uh, can can actually make a living of sorts, at least enough to buy uh, crystal meth by fishing envelopes out of mailboxes with uh, with a mouse trap on a string, you know, a glue trap, and and they pick, he, they pick on the mailboxes. They're right in front of the post office. The blue mailboxes, you think those are safe? They're not with these people around. They have found ways to steal mail out of there. And uh, on one of the mail thefts, it leads to information that a jewelry store has a, a cache of diamonds coming in, a shipment. And uh, from that, uh, uh, we end up with a, a Russian gangster being involved in, in a diamond theft. And that sort of is is the storyline that that goes through Hollywood Station as we're dealing with the cops and getting inside their heads, the different groups of cops. There's this storyline going through it where this Farley character, and I loved writing him, Jim, because he's mean. He's he's a bully. Oh, he's is he a bully? terrible to his, to his poor, long-suffering girlfriend who's not very bright. He's a racist. He's, he's, he's everything that's horrible. But I loved writing about him. <laughs> He's, he is so he's, funny because he's so he's p- not, pitiful. He's not even nice to his fellow <laughs> addicts. No, uh, he's mean. Uh, clearly, Hollywood Station delves deeply into the issues facing law enforcement today. It also throws a spotlight on a bunch of memorable characters. Just stay tuned. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC. Or send an email to jimfostercoc at gmail.com. This is Jim Foster having a marvelous time with our guest, Joseph Wamba, talking about his latest book, his return to the LAPD scene. It's called Hollywood Station. It's published by Little Brown and Company. And uh, another fair country writer, Jonathan Kellerman. Had some nice things to say. Joseph Wamba, he writes, invented the modern police novel in Hollywood Station is classic Wamba. Brilliant characterization, impeccable plotting, stunning sense of place, and that special brand of irreverent, mordant humor for which Wamba holds the patent. This is the master at his best. Uh, We got a great book here, kids. Let's face it. Now, I want to get something... Uh, on the air, if, if you will, that I would feel very bad if I don't. We haven't talked about one of the main characters, the sergeant of the station, or as his name is Oracle. His first name is Cleve? Well, no, uh, Merv, but only, Merv, but only Merv. one guy calls him one that. One guy calls him Merv, one of the, one of the old souls. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, one of the women policemen, uh, Mag, has uh, been hurt. She was out doing a prostitute sting, and... Uh, she gets hurt terribly. She uh, almost loses her sight. She has a concussion and uh, so forth. And uh, Oracle is uh, talking to the troops, I guess, the morning after. Oracle looked at all those faces, wondering how it was possible that they would, they could be so young. And he said to them, the shield you're wearing is the most beautiful and most famous badge in the world. Many police departments have copied it, and everyone envies it, but you wear the original. And all these critics and politicians and media a-holes come and go, but your badge remains unchanged. You can get as mad and outraged as you want over what's going to go down, but don't get cynical. Being cynical will make you old. Doing good police work is the greatest fun there is. 
He says that more than once in the book. The greatest fun you'll ever have in your lives. So go on out tonight and have some fun. And Fausto, try to get by with only two burritos. Speedo weather is coming up. <laughs> That's a wonderful line. And that, you know, is, is a guy who's in charge of these people who are working under this consent decree and having a heck of a time with it and telling him that their work should still should still be fun. Where did you dig up Oracle? Is he a composite? The Oracle, yeah, the Oracle. They call him the Oracle. He he's uh, he's a sergeant who's my age exactly. Mm-hmm. He was probably in my academy class. I don't know. Uh, and he represents the end of an era. You know, uh, probably when he's gone, there won't be anybody, won't else, be anybody else that man. old. Okay. And is he still active? Uh. I mean, in real oh, life. Oh, in real life, he's a composite of a couple guys. Oh, okay, yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah, okay. But uh, in this particular scene, he states what I think is the most important theme of Hollywood Station. He states it explicitly, and it's this, that doing good police work is the most fun you will ever have in your life. I am, I am so tired of police movies, TV shows, even books, that present police work as being super grim and ultra-violent. Now... If police work was really that super grim and ultra-violent, who would do it? Yeah. Nobody but someone who was super grim or ultra-violent. And it's not like that. It is the most fun that I've ever had, and I wanted that theme to be expressed. I didn't want anybody to miss it. So the Oracle states it explicitly at a time when they are demoralized, when one of their own has been badly hurt, a woman, and, uh, and he lifts them with that particular speech. There's another character in here who's very good for for laughs. He is uh, uh, Hollywood Nate Weiss. And uh, Hollywood Nate is a cop, but he really would rather be a movie star. And he tries to get as as much extra work as he can and, you know, fit it in his police schedule. Sometimes his police schedule gets in the way. And at night, he dreams. When Hollywood Nate lay in bed after getting off duty, he had latte dreams and mocha fantasies of life in a high canvas chair, wearing a makeup of never dating below the line persons, using the word energy at least once in every three sentences, and living in a house so big you'd need a Sherpa to find the guest rooms. Such was the dream of Hollywood Nate Weiss. (laughs) <laughs> and you know, for you to get that out, I mean, that's that's great. That's great. And he's a good cop. He's a good he's cop. A good cop. There, there always has been a Hollywood uh, guy on LAPD. I can remember Hollywood Lou. There's a Hollywood Bill. There's always a Hollywood somebody with <laughs> at LAPD is like that. Now, the other person that that uh, is is different, and probably from your time on the force, you have a Ukrainian uh, detective. Yeah, he's he's detective level, and his name is Victor Chenenko. And in the time available to us, I would like to share some of the idiomatic usage of Victor Chenenko, a Ukrainian. I know it is a far shot. <laughs> it is an intestines feeling that I have. A leopard cannot change its freckles. <laughs> well, Joseph Wambaugh can't change from being the author that can really deliver the kind of book that Hollywood Station is. He's done it in grand fashion. He's been wonderful to have on the show. This has been Conversations on the Coast, and I'm Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC, or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com.